Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we're going to have a very cool tool which is UB Master. This plugin has been around for a long time but it's the first time that it has been introduced into ZBrush for iPad. So today I'm going to show you how you can very quickly generate UB Maps that are quite functional. You're going to be able to use these UB Maps inside other softwares, inside ZBrush and get them very very quickly. So let's go. The first thing you need to have is a relatively clean topology. This for instance right here is a very basic Siri mesh topology that I did for the whole thing. Originally, this little guy right here was meant to be for 3D print, so I didn't really care about topology. But let's say we wanted to make it into a game asset that's not going to deform, right? Like, this is not animation deformation topology, but it might be there on the game, like a statue or something like that. Well, this is what we can use. And it's very simple to use UB Master. We need to go to C plugins. I'm going to have them here on the side. And once we have it over here, I'm going to go to UB Master. Now, it's very simple to use. If you want symmetry, you keep symmetry on. If you don't want symmetry, you can turn that off and you just hit unwrap. That's it. <laughs> That's literally all you have to do. Now, in order to see what this did, right, we need to go to the UB map section right here and click on morph UB. This will morph the UB, and as you can see, we're going to be able to appreciate how UB Master handled all of the cuts in order to give us this UB. Is this the best UV you're going to have? No, absolutely not. But there's a couple of things that we can do here to help us into getting a nicer UV. And the first thing is, of course, polygroups. So if we go, for instance, to select lasso and we select specific areas, let's say, for instance, here, the head, and I press Control W, right? Then let's select the back legs. And again, Control W. Finally, let's select the front legs right here and Control W. We now have four different groups, right? The head, the torso, and this little thing right here that we can utilize to generate cleaner UVs. Now, in this particular case, for instance, I would recommend expanding this polygroup a little bit more. Polygroups and do, sorry, to visibility, I'm going to say grow a couple of times and then hit Control W again so that we have a cleaner UV right there. Same thing for this area. So I'm going to go right here, hide that whole thing. Let me hide the little belly right there. There we go. So as you can see, the little belly is a different element. I'm going to hide everything except for the belly and the back legs right there and Control W is again. So now we have four different groups. Now, it might seem like these two are the exact same group. They're actually not, um, even though they have very, very similar colors. If we go back to UV Master, we can use this polygroup options and say unwrap again. And what's going to happen now is we're going to get four different islands, each with this polygroups. Now, these are not super clean polygroups. You can see that the edge is very jaggedy, right? Even then, like we can totally work with this inside the texturing. But it's important to remember that the cleaner your edge loops and your topology, the cleaner your cuts can be as well. If we morph now, look at this. We get such a nicer result here on the unwrapping of all of the different elements. So that's going to be your first tool or the first thing that we can use when using UB Master to control where we want the different flow of elements. For instance, here, one of the things that I want to do is I actually want to do like the bottom section of the foot. There we go, like that, similar to what we would normally do inside of Maya, right? Control W, we're going to get the, the bottom parts right there. And this is going to give us an even nicer unwrapping of the whole UBs. Check quickly here, we're going to have the bottom parts of the legs and all of these things are going to work a lot better. One thing that I strongly recommend when doing UVs in any software is to use a UV checker to see how the distortion is going. And we can actually go and do that here on the texture map. So now, since we have UVs, I can import a texture map, such as one of the UV checkers that we constantly use, and look at how this thing is unfolding across the different parts of our character. Look at that. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? Now, we do have a couple of ex some extra control options that we can do here for our UVs that's going to allow us to use this thing called Enable Control Painting, okay? I'm going to try enabling control control painting. And as you can see, it says that we need to work on something that has no subdivision levels. This one in particular has all of the detail in the different subdivision levels. So I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level and I'm going to click on this option that says work on clone. If we do this, a new tool is going to be created up here. This is C's lurk, whatever, clone tool. And we're going to have the option to start painting the different things that we want to do in terms of this control paint. It's very simple. We click on enable control. And then what I want to do is I want to protect certain areas. So for instance, let's say we want to try and keep most of the, like the face section protected. So I'm going to click on protect. We're going to switch to this paint brush. As you can see, that only has RGB and no other thing uh, connected. And I'm going to paint all of the areas where I don't want any elements to be affected. Like I, I don't want to have any color on this particular areas, okay? Once I'm happy, I can go to the attract option and I can also paint very similar to what we would expect with seam lines. Look at that. So for instance, we can do a seam line right there 
and let's do a seam line across the back part of the face right here. So it's not gonna give you the exact same control as if we were doing this inside of Blender or Maya where we can literally select which edges we wanna go through, but it's gonna give us a very, very good idea or very good result. Here's another example. Let's go on the legs. I'm gonna paint all of the legs red because I don't wanna have any like seams on the legs, right? And then since they're like cylinders, one of the things that I might wanna have is a like a cut, right? Like a cylindrical cut on the crevices. So I'm gonna paint across the arms right here. Again, very similar to what we would do with softwares, cut or paint a line going across down here. I have the line that goes in fingers. The polygons are also gonna help, remember that? Like they, they, they're definitely gonna be um, affected by the, by the color we're adding. But this paint right here can really help us decide or really help us with this, tell it where we want most of the cuts to be. Now you can be as clean or as loose with this like painting control as you want. We also have this erase. We have this option, very cool. I'm not gonna use it right now, but it's called attract from ambient occlusion, where we'll try to find the ambient occlusion cavities and it will try to place the seams on those specific areas. Now, once we're happy, we can click on wrap again and we're gonna be using both the poly groups and the control painting that we have right here to generate this cut right here. And as you can see, most of the blue lines are gonna be on the edges of the element. It's not always going to be perfect to the specific like flow, but it should get us relatively close and again, give us a little bit of a better distribution. If you see here that you might wanna add more cuts, here's again where using more polygroups might be a good idea to generate a couple of extra islands. But right now, this distribution right here looks quite nice, I would say. So that's pretty much it, guys. You use these lines to protect or you use these lines to attract and we can get some islands that are gonna look a little bit nicer. Remember, very important to check the texture map if possible to get an idea of how the distribution and the distortion is happening so that we get a nice preview of how this thing is gonna work when we apply certain textures to it. Now, remember, we're still working on the clone on this particular asset right here. So once we're happy with this, what we need to do is copy the UVs on this one, go back to the previous tool and paste the UVs. Very important to do that process. Otherwise, there's no way to bring those back. But if we go back here to UV map and we morph the UVs, you're gonna see that we still have the exact same UVs that we had from the previous element. Once again, is this gonna give you the best possible UV distribution that you were gonna have compared to other softwares? Probably not, but especially on objects that are very sort of like hard surfacey and you have very clean planes, this tool right here is really, really good, especially when using things like polygroups. Let's do it very quickly here for this elements right here, this uh, fangs. And the first thing I need to do is I need to see remesh these things. So the process, as you guys know, we cover this on both of the courses, the ZBrush course and the iPad course, is to duplicate these elements, do a quick see remesh right here, move a couple of times to get a nicer resolution and project the information of this ones, which were the dirty topology. We don't need them anymore. We have this fangs right here with this exact same amount of details. We go down to the lowest of division level. And again, here's where we can do the unwrap. Since these two are very simple elements, it should be fairly easy to do. But again, I'm going to help it a little bit by just grabbing like the caps of the elements right there. And I'm going to press Control W. So we're going to have two poly groups right there. And here, if we do another very quick work on clone, we can quickly tell it that we want the seams on the back. So I'm gonna enable control painting here. We're gonna do protect. We're gonna protect pretty much everything here on the front of the, and once we're happy with that protect, remember I don't care too much about the upper area because it's a different poly group, but once we're happy with this one, we go to attract and we paint a line down the back. Right there. Once we're happy, we keep uh, symmetry is fine, polygroups is fine, and we just hit unwrap. Four islands, which is expected. And if we take a look again at the geometry here, and if we take a look again at the UV map and we morph, look at that beautiful cut going straight down the back. That's gonna be very nice. It's gonna be give us a nice option, right, to texture this again inside of Substance Painter or any of the other elements. Now, one very important problem, or not problem, but like a um, thing that we need to think about when doing this UV Master is that if you have multiple subtools, Yes, we're gonna be able to do the unfold for each element, but as you can see right now, they're not sharing the exact same textile density. If you haven't seen the textile density video, make sure to check it here on the channel where I explain what that is. But right now, since they have different um, uniformities or different density right here, if we were to texture this character, the little fangs right here, not little, but this big fangs right here, will get a lot of resolution and the frog won't get as much. So what you wanna do if you wanna keep the exact same density is you wanna have all of your sub tools in the same tool, okay? So you wanna merge all of them with all of their subdivision levels and things like that into the same one, or alternatively, take this into a different software, which I'm about to do, to just lay them out properly so that they share the exact same UV Texel density size.
Now, before we jump into Maya, I do want to mention this because I, I know people are going to be like, oh, why are you showing us how to do UVs inside of ZBrush if like, we know that the best way to do it is in Blender or in Maya? Well, there's a lot of things out there, especially, for instance, photogrammetry, where you're never going to have like extremely super clean UV, right? Because these meshes are not meant to be subdivision meshes. They're not meant to be... Uh, animation deformation meshes. We just want to capture as much of the silhouette and as much as the detail as possible. And in this particular case, is if you don't have a UV, let's say that you got a photogrammetry thing that uh, doesn't have like the color information, it's just like the raw like object scan, then being able to generate all of this UV maps quickly by just like painting polygroups or painting masks is very, very, very handy. Remember guys, not every single asset that we work in the 3D world is gonna have the exact same purpose. It's not the same thing to do a 3D print mesh. It's not the exact same thing to do a game mesh it's not the same thing to do a film mesh it's not the same thing to do a photogrammetry mesh like there's so many different things that we can do in terms of the final result that we're going to deliver and we need to adapt our workflows depending on what part of the process or what pipeline we're working on so here inside of Silver, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm just very quickly going to go to C plugin. I like to use this FB export import. I'm going to export all. Then it's fine. I'm just going to export this to my mesh stamp that I have right here. Let's call this. And there we go. This is it. This is the low poly of the slurk. I'm going to scale it. I know that this is not normally what we do because if we're going to bake, we need to keep the same elements. But I want to show you um, the UVs that we have here inside of Maya. So as you can see, again, not freaking bad. One very important thing. For whatever reason, the UVs instead of a ZBrush will always be flipped. We take a look at the UVs, you're gonna see that when we see them from the front view, like this, the head is down here, the body is up here, the arms are on this side right here, and we have this empty space over here. But if we check them on Maya, it's actually on the other side. Look at that, the head is right there. So we'd have a, something called a vertical flip. This is very important. When you are importing textures, sometimes you need to flip them on the V channel to make sure that they work properly. This is just the way Seabrush is programmed. So if I were to grab the fangs, you're gonna see that the fangs are occupying way, way more space than they should. So what I can do here to make sure that they all share the exact same space is grab all of the elements, grab all of the UV shells right here, go to modify, layout, and then select this option right here that says packing. I'm gonna shell pre-rotation, vertical is fine. Shell pre-scaling, very important, preserve 3D ratios, and I'm just gonna hit apply. And what this will do is it will pack all of the elements so that they share the exact same texel density. So as you can see, the size of the squares now are the exact same for all of them. We still have a lot of empty areas, right? And this is the and this is the external struggle when we're dealing with textures because we have a lot of wasted space right here. So ideally, what we want to do is we want to start adding a couple of more cuts or divide this into multiple pieces or more pieces so that we get a little bit more distribution. Other things you can do is if you want to give the head, for instance, a little bit more resolution or space, we could just scale the head up. Yes, this is going to break the textile density a little bit, but it's going to give us a little bit more resolution on the parts that are more important. So now that I'm here within Maya, one thing I'm going to do very quickly is I'm just going to go down the center line of all of these elements. I'm just going to cut them. So I'm just going to say UV and cut UV edges. That's going to make the islands a little bit smaller. And when I lay out, we should get a little bit more space, right? We get a little bit more space because since the islands are a little bit, we get a more even distribution. We can break this UVs back into ZBrush. That's perfectly fine. And some of you might be asking, okay, well, I don't have Maya. Like, do I really need to do this kind of stuff here inside of uh, ZBrush if I need to? And the answer is yes. Let me explain or show you you exactly why. If you're inside of ZBrush, there are certain tools that work very, very nicely with this kind of elements. So having UVs, for instance, here with the frog allows us to go to a tool like the noise tool, the surface element, and add a specific noise. In the newest versions of um, ZBrush, we have noises from, we have some maxon noises that are very cool. So for instance, we have this gaseous one that looks very interesting. If we do that, there's a plugin scale here. Let's get rid of this noise scale, a little bit with the strength. So by playing here with the strength, as you can see, we can get some really, really interesting noises. And here's the cool thing. We can change the plugin so that it works with the UVs. So instead of following the sort of like basic situation there with the, with the mesh, we're actually using the UVs as a guide to properly propagate all of these noises right here. And I hit OK. You can see that we get all of that noise and we can just apply to it. I usually like playing with the curves here to generate something that looks a little bit more interesting. I'm going to get rid of that one, of that option. There we go. That. So look at how crazy this sort of like texture starts looking. And again, we change the options so that it's now following the UVs. So you will see a seam, but it will form or it will go across the surface a lot more uniformly. We use 3D, what would happen sometimes is especially on the corner pieces, certain areas might get a little bit too stretched. And again, that's why UV is so powerful because it allows us to get a way, way nicer result on the distribution here on the noise.
So that's it, my friends. That's the quick overview on UB Master. Do not sleep on this tool. It's a very, very handy tool. It allows you to get some really, really nice results relatively quickly. And especially when the topology is not as important or you need to do things a little bit faster, this is a great way to do it. Again, don't sleep on it for hard surface stuff. If you have really clean planes, really clean polygroups, then you can take a huge, huge advantage of this as they showed on the demo with this little like arcade stick that they did on the latest update. So if you like this video, please let me know here in the comments don't forget to like share subscribe you can check of course both the seabrush stylized course as well as the seabrush for ipad course that i have here on the site it's going to be on the description we cover not only some of these tools but a lot of other tools that are important for the seabrush use and well that's pretty much it don't forget always learning always improving i'll see you back in the next one